G'day cobbers, welcome back to the bush. In this episode of Lockouts for All Driving, we're going to this PWM or pulse width modulation temperature compensating fan speed controller to cool down the Victron Energy DC to DC charger because they run hot as hell. Now, these PWM controllers can either be run in manual mode or a temperature compensating automatic mode. First up, let's check out how manual mode works. And here's how the PWM computer fan controller works in manual mode. So we don't have to worry about all this stuff over here for the moment. That's all to do when your thermal couple probe is attached, but it's not at the moment. So we're in manual mode. We only have to deal with this part here. Great. Okay. Now, usually number two LED will be illuminated unless you're right at the bottom step when number two and number one will be illuminated or you're at the very top step where number two and number three will be illuminated. But usually you'll be somewhere in between and number two will be illuminated with a steady light. Now, if you want to move up one step, you press the button once. Number three LED will illuminate, indicating that you've gone up one step or up 5%. And then it will go back to a fast flashing number two light. Fast flashing means waiting to save. And it will fast flash for about 20 seconds. And then finally it will go back to a steady light. And that means you've saved that setting. So you can then take the power off. And next time you put the power back on, well, you'll be at that very same setting. Okay, that's how it works. Now, if you want to go down a step, let's say you're at step number 15, want to go down to step number 14. Well, you simply hit the button twice. Number one LED will illuminate temporarily and it will go back to a fast flashing number two light. All you have to do is wait while the fast flashing LED is waiting to save for that 20 seconds and then it will go back to a solid light and then you'll have that setting saved. And that's how the PWM computer fan controller operates in manual mode. So now you know the theory, let's show it working. And here's how it works in manual mode. Now you can see a piece of reflective tape stuck to one of the fan blades there. That's just so my tachometer here can pick up exactly how fast that fan is spinning. All right, let's supply it with 13.8 volts from this power supply here. Now you can see on the readout here, LED 1 and 2 are illuminated. And that tells me in manual mode, because we don't have the temperature probe connected, that it's going as slowly as possible. So let's find out exactly how slow that is. And it's sitting at about 200 revolutions per second. Okay, let's find out exactly how much wind is coming out the back of this thing. It's not exactly putting out a bunch of wind at the moment. <laughs> now put it on hold. So that's coming at about 0.49 metres per second. Okay. All right, so let's crank it up a little bit. Now, with each press of this button here, you can see that LED 3 illuminates temporarily, and then it goes back to flashing LED 2. So we'll put it up three or four spots. So we get a bit of difference between the two. That's three or four out of the 20. So let's have a look now exactly how fast that's spinning at. That's spinning about 730 revolutions per second. And let's check out exactly how much air has been thrown out the back now. And that's substantially faster. And that's coming in at 1.2 meters per second. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll go through from step one right through to step 20 and I'll graph it. Let's have a look at that now. And here's the results of the PWM controller RPM versus flow. On the left hand side here, we've got the RPM, and on the right hand side here, we've got the flow velocity in meters per second. So our first line here, that's our fan speed. So right from step one, right through to step 20. Now step one was about 200 revolutions per minute, and finally our max speed was around 2,220 revolutions per minute, measured on that tachometer for a rated 2,000 revolutions per minute. So spinning a little bit faster. Let's have a look at that flow velocity. And it's pretty linear actually, it's uh, very, very close. And it ranges from just under one meter per second at step one, right through to our maximum velocity of 4.1 meters per second. That's equivalent of about 14 kilometers per hour. We can also see that works out to an equivalent of 215 meters cubed per hour versus its rating of about 185 meters cubed per hour. So it's actually doing a little bit better than its specifications. Now let's have a look at how pulse width modulation is supposed to work. Now on the left hand side we've got the voltage in between 0 and 5 volts for each duty cycle and the right hand side here we've got the duty cycle 0%, 33%, 66% and finally 100%. So when you're at 0% duty cycle it's off sitting at 0 volts 100% of the time but let's have a look at 33% duty cycle. It looks kind of like this. So it'll be on 33% of the time and off. 66% of the time. What about 66% duty cycle? Well, 
inversely, that will be 66% of the time on and 33% of the time off. And 100% duty cycle, well, that's just on sitting in that 5 volts all the time. That's how pulse width modulation is supposed to work. Now, let's check it out out of this PWM controller. Now, this is at our very slowest speed. So we got about 4 volts or 4.3 volts peak to peak, about 8 to 10% duty cycle. And the signal seems to be coming through at about 25 kilohertz. So that's 25,000 hertz. So let's start ramping it up and see what happens. I'll fast forward this bit so you don't have to watch all 20 steps. So now we're at 50% duty cycle and sitting at about 4.95 volts. Now as you can see we're at 100% duty cycle. There is no longer a PWM signal there, but we'll measure the voltage anyway. So if we go into the cursor mode and grab our cross cursor, there we go, we can measure in between here and our origin which is just about there and it tells us it's at 5.03 volts okay so we'll get rid of that cursor now none there we go and let's start ramping it down and we'll see what happens to our voltage and our duty cycle So we're back down to our lower setting. We're sitting at, again, 4.3 volts, about 8 to 10% duty cycle, and that 25 kilohertz. So that's how it ramps the speed up and down in manual mode. But what about the auto mode? Let's check that out. And here's how that PWM controller works when that thermal couple probe is attached. Now, we already know how to set up our baseline speed because that's exactly the same as when you're in manual mode. However, TU is something new. Now, TU is the temperature at which it starts ramping up from to get towards 100% duty cycle or its maximum speed. And that can be programmed anywhere in between 30 and 70 degrees Celsius. Now in TD or Delta T, it's the change in temperature in between your program speed of TU and 100% duty cycle. And that can be anywhere in between five and 50 degrees Celsius. So at a minimum, you could start off ramping up that speed at 30 degrees Celsius and get into 100% duty cycle at 35 degrees Celsius. At a maximum, it could be 70 degrees Celsius and then that 50 degrees Celsius plus 70 degrees Celsius, of course, would equal 120 degrees Celsius at that maximum 100% duty cycle. So that's how it works. Let's see how we're gonna program it on the board. Now we already know how to set up our baseline speed here. Now let's set up TU and TD. So TU is the temperature at which the fan speed starts ramping up. And let's say we want it on 40 degrees Celsius. But when you press and hold that button and it does a slow flash routine, it's illuminating number one, which means 30 degrees Celsius. So we hit that button once, it'll move up to 35 degrees Celsius. Hit that button again and it'll move up to 40 degrees Celsius. Let's say we accidentally hit it one more time and it moves up to 45, but we want it on 40 degrees Celsius. Hit it twice and it'll go back down to 40 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's our baseline temperature from which the fan speed will start moving up. So we press and hold that button again, and we then set up our TD or our Delta T. Let's say we want it at 10 degrees Celsius, but currently it's sitting on 15 degrees Celsius with LED number one and two illuminated. So press that button twice, and it will go back down to 10 degrees Celsius. Then you press and hold that button to lock it in. Okay, that's it. Let's have a go on the PWM controller. Okay, and now we've got that thermal couple probe attached. Let's show you how to program that board with our base temperature and our delta T. So at the moment, our baseline speed is sitting at about 200 revolutions per second. Let's turn it up a bit. Let's turn it up, let's say five steps. One, two, three, four, five. Now you actually have to wait for that number two LED to stay illuminated solid instead of flashing. But we can see we're sitting at about 730 revolutions per second. Beauty. All right, so we'll just wait for number two to come solid. And there we go. All right, now we can set up our baseline temperature from which it'll start ramping up from. So if we press and hold that button, you can see it's on 30 degrees Celsius at the moment because number one LED is flashing. So we'll press it twice. That's 35 and now 40 degrees Celsius with LED number one and number two flashing. Beauty, that one's set in. So let's press and hold that button. And now we can see this is our Delta T or our TD. Number one LED is illuminated and flashing fast. So that tells me it's five degrees Celsius. So let's change it to 10 degrees Celsius. Let's change it to 15 degrees Celsius. Now it's set to 15 degrees Celsius. Let's press and hold that button. 
and we've locked everything in. Okay, so what we have locked in is our baseline speed at step five, our baseline temperature from which it's going to start ramping up from at 40 degrees Celsius, and our delta T at 15 degrees Celsius. So it won't reach maximum temperature until it reaches 55 degrees Celsius. So that's 40 plus 15. Okay, we've got some hot water here. Let's dunk it in that hot water, that temperature probe in that hot water, and see if it starts ramping up a bit. Now you can probably hear the fan in the background, but what I'll do is I'll confirm it with a tachometer, and it should be at 100% duty cycle. There we go. It's sitting at about 2,200 RPM. Beauty, so it works. Now, we'll take the temperature probe out, and eventually it's gonna take a little while to actually cool down a bit, but it'll slow down the fan as well. And there we go, you can probably hear it slowing down now. So that's it, that's how you program the PWM temperature compensating controller for a four wire PWM fan. Now in the next episode of Lock Ups Full Driving, we're gonna look all about convective heat transfer, or the best way to cool this sucker down. All right guys, now if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and if you didn't, by all means, give it a thumbs down, not once, not thrice, but twice. Thanks guys, we'll see you in the next one.